Planet Vero Studios, brought to you by Evergreen Media, creating cohesive marketing campaigns. Evergreen Media in Vero Beach. Honestly, without Treasure Coast Community Health, I think we'd be a much poorer community in terms of our health. We're always striving to fill the gap for everyone in the community, rich or poor. Good afternoon and welcome to Community Conversation. My name is Vicki Soule and I'm the CEO of Treasure Coast Community Health. We have eight locations around the uh, county um, so that we're trying to be always accessible and convenient for you because good health care is not just a once in a while event. It's something that we need to keep up with in order to keep ourselves living a long and productive life. And so to that end, um, I bring in some guests that are around our county as communicators and collaborators, um, but I also bring in some of our staff so we can dig a little bit deeper into some of the things that enhance our health. And one of those is, is pharmaceuticals. May is the month of mental health awareness, and certainly there are many, many of us who might have a bout of sadness or depression or grief or maybe some anxiety over some things that are conflicting within us or around us. Um, but for the most part, um, there are others that have chronic diseases and medication does help them. Bipolar, schizophrenia, those things that we know as very serious diseases. And so in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, I do want to say um, that this will connect um, to our pharmacy. Um, and today I have Jalicia Chambers here who is our 340B coordinator and a certified pharmacy tech. Um, Jalisa has been with us for quite some time, and so we're going to dive a little bit deeper today into the topic of pharmaceuticals. So welcome, Jalicia. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Um, we started probably 10 years ago with our first in-house pharmacy, and that was out in Felsmere. And the idea at that time was that there were no other pharmacies out there. And so in addition to offering discounted uh, medications through the 340B program of the federal government, something that federally qualified health centers are allowed to do, we also had an open pharmacy. Can you tell us the difference between the 340B and an open pharmacy? Yes. So uh, what an open pharmacy is, it would be like a pharmacy where you could go see any provider of any sort and ha take your prescription from that provider to that pharmacy and have it filled like you would do at your, you know, local pharmacy anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, what a 340B pharmacy is, it's a closed pharmacy, which they're normally a lot of times inside of a health center. Mm -hmm. So they're only allowed to fill prescriptions for the doctors who work for that specific health center. There are a few exceptions, but the bulk is the doctors who work at that facility. And, and sometimes hospitals, especially nonprofit hospitals, will also have a closed 340B pharmacy. Correct. Okay. So we, we opted not to, over time, renew our open pharmacy license because the reality is that we were not seeing people um, that had prescriptions from others outside of um, Treasure Coast Community Health. Um, and then when we built the Oslo Road facility in 2010, we put a pharmacy there. So we had pharmacies at the north and south part of the county. At that point in time, though, we did have a number of people who were still being seen in the emergency room, particularly over the weekend. So what was the pharmacy solution on that? So for that, we decided to uh, get contracts with pharmacies who do have weekend hours to provide our patients who, as you stated, were seen at the emergency room over the weekend, they could still receive some sort of discount um, from those other pharmacies that we contracted with. It was a big, big help for situations like that. Because again, most of the um, hospitals do not have closed pharmacies or rather, they don't have open pharmacies. They don't have sorry. open pharmacies, yeah, correct. So, so you get a prescription on a Saturday afternoon, what are you going to do with it, right? Yes, they yeah. would have to take it somewhere else if it came from the emergency room. A lot of hospitals tend to fill prescriptions for inpatient 
um, mm-hmm. inpatients who are spending a couple days in the hospital. And then upon discharge, sometimes they get some. Yeah, they'll get a small supply, but then they'll also a lot of times go home with prescriptions to take to another pharmacy to get a longer supply. And now, if since you touched on inpatients, if someone was an inpatient at any of our local hospitals and they were discharged, would our physicians automatically get those records or would the patient um, really need to get a hold of their own provider and let them know that something unusual had happened and they were in an emergency room or actually admitted to the hospital? Um, So from my personal uh, experience, I know that uh, I would, a lot of the patients would have to bring their discharge notes. Speaking for pharmacy wise, they would need to bring those discharge notes to the um, pharmacy and then we would have them scanned into their chart so their primary care doctor can see what went on with them. Um, But I know before the hospital change or our local hospital change, a couple of our uh, medical assistants and providers have access to the hospital records and they're able to get those for the patients. So, um, but as, as a patient myself, I would try to be vigilant and bring my own notes just in case that provider didn't get them on their own. Yeah, it's not a very unified system across right. the state of Florida. Mm-hmm. And as I tell my children, I, I don't have ESP, nor do you. Okay. Right. So um, again, a reminder that we'd love to be able to do that reconciliation between what they were on as mm-hmm. medication, what the ER may have added or changed, and what their provider needs to be updated on. So again, um, how would they do that specifically for pharmacy? Could they send you an email or make a phone call? They how can do they a, do that? Yeah, they can make a phone call or uh, they could stop in. Sometimes if they're going to bring us their prescription to, for us to fill it, which would be one of those exceptions that I spoke about earlier, they could do that and then inform us then and then we'll let them know. So we'll need the discharge notes and then you can go over to make an appointment with your um, primary care to follow up Um, but they could call us or they can stop in and do it that way well unfortunately most people are transportation challenged Mm -hmm. either in time distance or money so i'm looking for maybe an electronic way a a picture of their discharge summary that they could um, shoot over through the patient portal or something like that Uh, right now we don't have that um, option. Okay. But now that you're bringing it up, it is a good option to kind of maybe lean towards in the future. Right now, we do just have a phone call or stopping in to physically bring the papers. Okay. Yes. Well, phone calls sure beats getting in the car and going yes, someplace. Yes. You know, um, time is money, as they say. So that's good to know. Um, what? Why would somebody continue um, to bring prescriptions to us? As opposed to, say, Walgreens, who's been, a, you know, Walgreens and Bay Street have been great partners within our community. Um, what's the advantage of coming back to Treasure Coast? Uh, well, because Treasure Coast Community Health Pharmacies are all 340B pharmacies. So that allows us to give discounted uh, medication prices to our patients. Okay. Um, as long as they meet a few qualifications, they can get those medicines at little and sometimes to no cost to them. So is it based on their income? It is not based on their income. Uh It's it's actually just based on whether or not they've been seen by their primary care provider within the last year or at least once a year. Okay. So if it's been a renewal for the last 12 months and they're rolling up to the new year, whatever time Mm -hmm. that starts, January or October or April doesn't matter. Um, they might be asked then to not get a fill until they see their actual provider again. Yes, correct. Okay. So our providers are very good at sending us notes. When we send a medication request, they will send a note back stating the patient needs an appointment, and then we can relay that to the patient, or they may go ahead and give them a one month supply. Um, And then along with that, say, won't be refilled until they see me. Okay. And that's that's the law. 
Correct. Okay. Just, yes. just making it clear here. Yes, it's yes. not something that we decided as a policy. Correct. That is the legal uh, uh, aspect of yes, it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, we're going to take a short break. We're just about halfway through our program. Um, so it's time to get up, get that cup of coffee or your afternoon martini. Um, stretch and come right back after a word from our sponsors. Time to take on those spring projects. Sturgis has lumber, hardware, and paint supplies. And for convenience, no one beats Sturgis. Just a stone's throw from Grand Harbor and Waterway Village at 4645 US-1 Bureau. Sturgis Lumber and Hardware, more than just lumber. ITEX, or International Trade Exchange, is the largest barter company in the world with over 25,000 members offering goods and services. We're a marketing company that brings you new business in the way of trade with over 200 local members enjoying the benefits of iTechs, like lawyers, doctors, plumbers, media, printing, and more. Hi, this is Liz Bowler. Contact me and find out why Barter Through iTechs has been smarter for over 30 years. 772-532-1881. Visit iTechs.com. Start your day with fuel in your tank with breakfast at Marsh Landing. You'll love our biscuits and gravy, sweet potato pancakes, or eggs benedict with a fried green tomato. And how about a mimosa or a monster Bloody Mary? It's breakfast, old Florida style, at Marsh Landing in Felsmere. Good morning, angels. No, not that kind of angels. These are honky-tonk angels. Tough, gritty, love good, love bad. Stompin' Angels. Life stories in the music. The story of three gutsy girls following their dream to Nashville. Over 30 classic country hits on stage at Riverside Theater starting May 30th. But you don't have to wait. Get your tickets now at the box office or riversidetheater.com. Treasure Coast Community Health in-house pharmacies have the lowest prices in Indian River County, even lower than big box pharmacies. Taking your medication as prescribed leads to better health. Affordable medicine makes it easier. Treasure Coast Community Health patients can pick up medicine as they leave the office or use free delivery and mail order services. Pharmacists are always available to answer questions. Switch to TCCH Pharmacies. Save money, stay healthy. 772-257-8224 and ask about our price match. Welcome back to Community Conversations. If you are just joining us, my name is Vicki Soule. I'm the chief over at Treasure Coast Community Health, where we have eight locations through the county that offer primary care services. And while I am thrilled to have so many collaborators work with Treasure Coast Community Health every day, um, the reality is, is we have a number of services ourselves that some folks don't seem to understand or even know about. So every once in a while, we'll take a deep dive, as we are today, talking about pharmaceutical services. And um, that uh, service goes back about 10 years, but it's not in every one of our locations. Um, is it tough to bring up a pharmacy, Felicia? Why don't we have it at every one of our locations, from your perspective as a pharmacy tech and our 340B coordinator? Um, I would say from from my perspective, it's it's really not needed at every single location uh, just because of all the different ways we provide the prescriptions to our patients. Um, the, the patient doesn't have to be seen at a, at a location that has a pharmacy in it in order to get their prescription from us. Okay. And it's my understanding that, again, coming back sometimes to state uh, laws, that if you have a pharmacy, you can't have it like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you have an outpatient pharmacy, it has to be so many uh, every day that the that the uh, center is open. Uh, yes, every day that the center is open, the pharmacy would need to be open as well. Okay, so again, some consolidation of effort so that those spaces could be used for other reasons at the non-pharmacy. Right. locations. Right. Okay. So, you know, we talked uh, before the station break about um, folks being able to use alternate pharmacies on the weekend, what we call expanded pharmacy locations, like Walgreens and like Bay Street Pharmacy up in Sebastian. And I kind of challenged you in terms of, well, why wouldn't people use that all the time? And one of the things that um, we didn't get a chance to talk about besides the cost factor um, are what you consider the perks. Yes. 
Yes. Tell us about the perks of ordering through Treasure Coast Community Health after seeing one of our providers there. So a big one uh, is that we provide mail order and delivery to our patients who um, either are lacking in transportation or they honestly just don't feel like making an extra stop after they're seen for the day. Um, and we provide that service at no additional cost to our patients. So that's that's a big one for our patients who are seen at locations that don't have pharmacies in the building. So if I were to get a prescription and it said three refills, would I have to call in each month to get that um, delivery initiated? Nope. What happens with our delivery and mail order patients is upon the first fill, we ask if you would like to be on autofill. And if so, then we'll go ahead and initiate that. So it's pretty much worry free for you from that point on. Uh, we get it filled. We do call you every month just to find out when is a good day and time for us to deliver it because um, we're just doing the service for you. It's a convenience for you. So we want to make sure that when you are available, we bring it out to you. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And and the other thing I will say, my husband's been getting eye drops and he got the first bottle and then the second month came around and you all called and said, does he need it? And he said, no, mm -hmm. um, there's still drops left in the bottle, which of course was a red flag to me that he had forgotten some days to put drops in his eyes. But <laughs> nonetheless, um, it saved me that expense um, for a bottle sitting on my counter for some time. Yes. So what other perks uh, have you guys um, done for patients? Uh, we also have partnered with uh, two different organizations. One is Direct Relief and one is AmeriCares. And what they do is each month or sometimes every other week or every week, they'll send us an allotment of medications that we're able to order. And we, in turn, are able to give those to our patients at no cost. Wow. Yes. So what kinds of things? I know I've seen Vaseline bottles, but I'm assuming that you're talking about medications. Yes, so we get um, <laughs> over-the-counter items such as the Vaseline, but we also get med medication or prescription um, products as well. So things are some uh, antipsychotics that are usually on the list, oh. uh, anti-anxiety, sometimes inhalers, different ones. Sometimes we even get lucky and we're able to get some insulin um, off of those lists in for our patients because that's a that's a that's really been, expensive. Yeah. Although I see they are making some headway, um, impressing some of the um, manufacturers to limit the cost of those um, going out to the public. So better days are ahead, at least on those fronts. But if you had a prescription for uh, a medication you just mentioned, uh, but it was not that particular medication, um, because we know there's generics and brands mm -hmm. and all of that, would you guys? suggest a, a transposition, a, an exchange to the provider? Yes. Wow. Uh, so what happens is if the provider sends it over and say we have the medication in the generic form um, at no cost for the patient, we then will contact the provider and just inform them, hey, we have, you sent it over for this, but we have this for free. Um, do you mind if we switch it? And usually, of course, they say yes, because they want to help save the patient money as well. So mm -hmm. that's how we and it that's how we do it. And it's a good thing that we're in the same organization, because instead of having to call the maybe the main number be put on hold, we have extensions that we can get directly to. So that saves the patient time as well. Mm -hmm. And you know all of their medical assistants. So yes. if they're in a room with a patient, you can go through their medical assistant Correct. as well. So um, lots of advantages about using our pharmacies. Are there other things that you would like us to, to talk about or to know about, particularly folks who might have a chronic disease? Um, you mentioned diabetes, and that's what got me thinking about that. Um, do you have folks come to the counter often asking for um, consultation? Um, and if so, is it you? Is it a, a pharmacist? Who yes. helps our patients? So for consultations, the pharmacist helps. Um, a lot of times, especially with um, the insulins, the patient, it might be their first time, so they want to know how 
to dial up their pens or uh-huh. how to draw the medication up. And our pharmacists are very, very helpful with that. And they consult the patients. Well, I, I've heard that several of you already have certifications to do injections, um, whether it's vaccines, vaccines mm-hmm. primarily. Yes. Okay. So this is not an unknown for you all. Right. So do you give much in vaccines out of the pharmacy or is that usually done in an interaction with the provider and their medical assistant? Um, right now it's mostly with the provider and their medical assistant, but um, some of us do go out with a pharmacist in, in the community and in the organization and we'll give flu shots. We did a lot of the COVID vaccine mm-hmm. shots and, um, you know, boosters and things of that like nature in the in the community. Mm-hmm. Now, in addition to flu, the shot um, that a lot of seniors talk about um, is that pneumovax or pneumonia um, shot. Is that still a necessary thing? Is it helpful when you turn 65 to have that additional um, protection? Um, I would say yes, because it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, I I hear a lot of people say things about different vaccines for um, diseases and stuff that have been pretty much eradicated, but it's like, it's when you stop getting the vaccines that it could potentially come back. Like so, polio has. Correct. Uh, what a shame. So you know? yes, I'm yeah. always, f- I'm very for vaccines from little to older, you know, because yeah, I'm just all about safety. And some sorry. of them are very expensive. So again, the 340B would be able to help discount some of that cost through the VFA um, Vaccines for Adults program, perhaps. Well, because the 340B, those those vaccines aren't not ordered through our 340B okay um, contract. So they're they're through a different way. Okay. Yeah. So the discount applies, but not through a 340B. Correct. Okay. Correct. So the 340B program, just to wrap this up, is something that comes with being part of the federally qualified health centers. Yes. And it is something that um, requires that a prescription either come from one of our docs. Correct. Or a referral. Yes. From one of our docs to someone else, like a cardiologist or a pulmonologist or yes. an infectious disease specialist. And then that discount will a- a- apply to those meds as well. It sure will. Okay. Yes. So we have a minute left. <laughs> Anything else that you want to reinforce? I would just reinforce if you are a patient at Treasure Coast Community Health, definitely check out our pharmacies again if you are at a location being seen by but that location does not have a pharmacy still give us a call or i mean try us out and see how you like us it's it's worth a try it's definitely worth it and i would echo that if you have not got a primary care provider yet if you're fairly new to town um, but you do have some medication needs um, the two kind of go hand in hand Um, Get an appointment to see one of our providers, talk to them about your medical uh, needs and then and or mental health needs. And then know that we're going to help you with your medication um, choices because they are so expensive and um, monies can be better spent elsewhere. So thank you, Jaleesia, for being here today and helping us take a deeper dive. And thank you all. If you know of anyone that could use our services, please don't hesitate to share our phone number with them. 257-8224 257-8224 or 257-TCCH. And next week, we'll be talking to someone else in the community. Um, so stay tuned and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye now.